there are a lot of study Bibles around today. Let's take a few moments to have a look at the Quest Study Bible. The Quest Study Bible is based on the New International Version and it is marketed as the only question and answer study Bible. It answers thousands of questions and it is a bestseller. It's sold over one million copies. Now the Quest Study Bible has some of the features that we find in many study Bibles. For example, there is a reading plan. There's a number of reading plans there. If we go over to Genesis, you'll find that like a typical study Bible, there is an introduction to the book, some really helpful notes there. And then also there are things like maps and charts. If we go over towards the back, there is a subject index. So if you want to look up a subject and go to key Bible verses, for example, on the tabernacle or temptation or the Ten Commandments. But what is different about the Quest Study Bible? Well, the way it's marketed is that it is answering many questions. More than a thousand people receive passages of scripture and were asked, what questions do you have about this portion of the Bible? And we're told here their responses help determine what kind of questions the notes would answer. And this really is a great strength of the Quest Study Bible. Just notice, first of all, how well it is set out. Uh, they, they use a lot of blue ink. They just put all the notes down the side. A lot of study Bibles have the notes at the bottom, but every single page has study notes. These are generally questions that are asked and then answers that are given. As you can see, it's very well set out. Uh, every now and then they'll have a little extra section there. Why was Elijah afraid after his great victory? And they'll just have a short little spiel on that. But where the Quest Study Bible is so strong is in answering the kinds of questions that people do ask about the Bible. I can see it being very useful for a youth leader in leading Bible studies among young people or in discipling a new Christian you could use this study Bible. So here's a few examples. If we go to Genesis chapter 3, what are some questions that might be raised from that passage? Let's have a look. Did God create the woman to be the man's assistant? Why weren't Adam and Eve created at the same time? Why was the woman formed from a rib? Why didn't they die for their sin? Was Adam with Eve when she spoke to the servant? And then each of these questions are answered in the column there. So again, it's very useful, even for someone who already has a study Bible. But this one just has that extra aspect that the others don't have in just reeling off all these questions and then answers and that can be really useful, for example, in leading a small group Bible study. And if we go over to Psalm 23, that wonderful shepherd psalm, uh, where the Lord is David's shepherd, there are questions raised there, such as, how does God refresh our souls? How does God guide us? How could God's rod and staff bring comfort? Why prepare a meal in the presence of enemies? Let's go over to John's Gospel. So we have the introduction there to John. There's not as much detail as there would be in some study Bibles, but again, this study Bible has its own specific purpose. And we'll just go over to John chapter 1. There are some really good thought-provoking questions there. Why did John use word as a name of a person? And why was John the Baptist so important? Why did John use the phrase one and only to describe Jesus? And why did the religious leaders interrogate John the Baptist? What did John's baptism mean? Uh, that well-known verse, John 1 verse 29, that Jesus is the Lamb of God, that John the Baptist declared that. Let's look at the question that's raised here. How is Jesus the Lamb of God? God's people offered lambs at the temple as a daily sacrifice to atone for their sins. As a symbol of innocence, these sacrificial lambs bore the people's guilt as a substitutionary offering. 700 years earlier, Isaiah had predicted that the Messiah would offer his life and be led like a lamb to the slaughter, to atone for the sins of the world. Then over in Ephesians chapter 6, if we're doing a study, Ephesians 5 and 6 on marriage and child raising and so on, there's some really helpful little sections there. That how does marriage symbolize Christ in the church? And do adult children have to obey their parents? Can we discipline children without embittering them and so on? And then you'll notice on the other page, this is one of the top 100. You'll have these scattered throughout the Bible, the top 100 most asked questions. And this one is, what is spiritual warfare and how does it affect me? So who is the Quest Study Bible useful for? Personally, if I was recommending just one study Bible to someone and you're only gonna buy one, I would still recommend the excellent Biblical Theology Study Bible based on the NIV or equal to that, the 
ESV study Bible. I still believe these are the two best study Bibles that I've come across in depth and quantity of notes. Having said that, the Quest study Bible still has a purpose. The question and answer format is excellent. It is a very good study Bible for youth leaders, but also for someone who already has a study Bible and just wants to read something a little bit different. For example, to read through a short book like Philippians or Colossians and just go through all the questions that are raised and looking at how those are answered. Uh, so it definitely does serve a purpose. It would also be an excellent study Bible for a young teenager or a new Christian who just has a lot of questions and they'll find some of their questions answered in the notes there. So definitely this is a worthy addition to the library of many Christians, the Quest Study Bible.